right. So we're going to keep on working with theory clips, practice clips. You will have all the bibliography on TEDCO. And as regards these new uh, sessions through Zoom, these are the kind of activities that we're going to be doing, right? Reading aloud, speaking, um, sometimes listening drills, right? Identifying tones, heads, three heads, okay, later, right? And for the following, um, we're going to start with this right away, right next Tuesday. And all this material is on PETCO already. How are we going to get organized? We're going to divide you in four groups. Because for these practice sessions, it's much better if we have a reduced number of students, right? So you all have the opportunity to, to speak. In this case, what we are going to do is uh, you will have to read aloud some exchanges which are marked with intonation. So you have to respect the intonation marked uh, in this uh, worksheet. So it's important that you practice beforehand. Practice, and then when we meet, you it's not a first sight reading, right? Uh, and we will be listening to you, making any corrections you uh, uh, telling you what what you have to change or not, and it's a uh, we we planned a forty minute session for each group. Right, one group will be with me, the other one with Lucia from eleven to eleven forty, and then the other two groups from um, ten to eleven to half past eleven, and we will be. Um, you will be working with different teachers each time. So for every session, you'll have to check in which group you are and which is your teacher uh, for that day, right? So for next Tuesday, the 18th, make sure you know in which group you are, download this practice material, practice it at home, and um, and we will be listening to you then. Lucia, I don't know if I'm forgetting something as regards these meetings. No, I, I don't think so. And I can see that the, the, the meeting details are already there, so. Right, you have the, the ID, the password, everything is there. The time, so I think it's uh, crystal clear. Clear, it, clear enough. <laughs> Uh, the worksheet, it, it's two pages, right? So you have like 14, 15 exchanges, right? So A and B, A said something, B answers, and it's just that. But we want you to practice um, saying the, the tones. Oh, well, I, by I the think, way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I remembered yeah, no, something yeah. um, yep. that uh, we will probably record those sessions but we will not post the videos. So if there's anyone in particular belonging to one of the groups who would like to listen to uh, him or herself afterwards, you ask for the video and we share the video with you in particular so that we don't post the video for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one more thing. If you cannot join the meeting for whatever reason, because your internet connection is down or you have something else to do on that day and at that day and that time, you get in touch with us. We'll try to solve it. Depending on the type of activity, we'll tell you what to do, right? In this case, what we can ask you to do is to make a recording, but depending on the activity, we will uh, tell you what to do. But important, if you cannot join the meeting, tell us. So I think there's something in the chat, but I cannot. It's a, it's a, I, I'm dealing with the chat, so don't worry. Oh, okay, because I have to open another yeah, window. Yeah, no, I, I, I do it, I do it. Room. Okay, yes, it's practice. It's just practice, 
but it's important to do it, right? Um, then, as regards the evaluation for the rest of the term, right? You're going to keep on having written assignments and oral assignments. There are two more oral interviews to come. For sure, the second one will be similar to the first one in the sense that you will um, have to make a recording. But for the third one, we want to meet you live uh, through Zoom, right? <laughs> um, so we will let you know about that, but have that in mind. The second oral interview will be recorded, but the third one will be carried out via Zoom. You will have a second written midterm, and that one will have a makeup. The procedure we're going to follow will be quite similar to the one you will have to follow for the final exam. So you get used to uh, what we have planned for final exams. And, but you, you, we will let you know about all these in, a, in due time, right? Not now, but we are going to keep on having written assignments and oral assignments as we've been doing during the first term, right? You upload them on Bitco, we correct them, and we give you your feedback through uh, by the same uh, tool, using the same tool. But something to say as regards the written and oral assignments, in particular, not the audio assignments, because the recordings, you've been uh, recording yourself for quite a, a long time, so you know uh, how to do it. But as regards the pictures, please make sure that they are clear enough, that there are no shadows, no blurred areas, right? Um, and if you are taking down a dictation using a sheet of paper from a notebook, please remember to write every other line leave us some space. It's really hard to make corrections on the computer. And if we have no enough space in between the lines to, to write things, it's really hard. Okay? And another thing is do them by hand. And then take a picture, or if you have a scanner, you can scan the picture, <coughs> the, the work, sorry, the, <coughs> the sheet of paper. But because some of you have been using um, some kind of phonetic fonts, but I think you're, it takes more time. And there are problems with some symbols when you, um, especially with E sounds. <laughs> And uh, I think it takes more time to check that the symbol is the correct one. So that's what we're going to ask for the final exam, that you do your dictation by hand, and then you take a picture of it. So let's do that. But important, please leave some space in between the lines for us to write the comments, okay? And uh, take a picture next to uh, the window or outside or something so that it's bright enough for us to see, please. Uh, you have no idea how long it takes to, to correct a dictation or a transcription that is not clear enough. Okay, so I think that's all as regards the organization. I don't know if I'm forgetting something, Lou. Um, no, I think that's, that's it as regards that. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything else. Right, do you have any questions? Any doubts as regards this? Anything you'd like uh, to add? Idea. Yeah, Emmanuel, I think he's asking about the in the chat box about the yeah 
Yeah, I'm answering that. Uh, Manuel wants to know which one would be better for us if uh, a picture or a PDF file. I said that in my case, both, but in your case, you prefer pics. Well, right, right, both, actually. Both, yeah. yeah. Okay. I prefer <laughs> pics, but I can deal with both. <laughs> um, right. So, any of those two types of file? by PDF or PICS. Um, you've got your comments as regards the midterm and the first oral interview. It took some time <laughs> for us to, to finish checking them. Quite a long time. But have you all received them? Do you have any doubts as regards the corrections? We tried to be as clear as possible <laughs> with the comments. I have here, so as not to forget the different exercises, the, the midterm, I don't know if you have any doubts. I think the, the statement here in the true or false exercise that caused more, more troubles uh, was uh, the third one. No, not the third one. The, um, it was uh, the one about. I think it's number seven. The focusing function of intonation helps to show what information is new and what is known. Oh no, it was number three. The intonation structure of an utterance tends to reflect the emotions of a speaker. The intonation structure of an utterance tends to reflect the grammatical structure. That was the correct answer. Or you can say that tone tends to reflect the emotions of a speaker. Tone only, not the intonation structure. When we say intonation structure, we are referring to division into tone units. Is that clear? I cannot see you, so I don't know if you... <laughs> Just uh, Lucia will check if, yes. you are, if you're saying it, it's, it's clear yeah, enough. Yeah, they, they, they're think... nodding, so I think it's, it's With clear. the rest. <laughs> the important thing is that With whenever the... you see the word structure, you should automatically think of grammar. <laughs> <laughs> so intonation structure refers to division into tone units. Right, so the division into tone units, that is tonality, tends to reflect the grammatical structure. And uh, I think with the rest, it was okay. That was the most problematic one. There was another one in which you had like two things to correct. Tonicity is the division into tone units or IPs to focus the hearer's attention on important information. It was like, uh, not just one thing that you have to change. Okay, tonicity is not the division into tone units or IPs, that's tonality, right? But tonicity is what we use to focus the hearer's attention on important information. So you could um, turn this statement into a true statement or correct this statement in different ways. You could talk about tonicity or you could talk about tonality. But Make sure you're not mixing things up. Tonicity refers to division into tone units and tonality to these focusing on information which the speaker considers to be important and wants the listener to pay attention to. Right? Valeria? Yep. In number two, I wrote that that um, sentence was false and you mm -hmm. corrected as wrong. I, I wrote that, for example, chunking is it has to do with the division of the of the message in comprehensible IPs or something something like that. That is kind of independent on punctuation. And you wrote it was wrong because there is some correlation between punctuation and and chunking. So what would be the the, the right answer? 
Tonality is sometimes shown through punctuation, but sometimes punctuation uh, does not correspond to uh, tonality. Oh, the meeting is about to end. We have 10 minutes. Let me close this window. Uh, I will have to see the way in which you justified your choice of uh, false or true statement. Um, let me check that later. But the point is that chunking is, um, does not always correspond to punctuation. There's not always a, there's not a one to one correspondence. Many times you need to insert an IP break, but there's in writing you have no punctuation uh, marks. And the other way about, sometimes you do have uh, uh, punctuation marks, but you don't insert an IP break. Okay, I will look for it and on Petco and I will send it to you. Email. Okay, no, I have it, so I can check it later. Oh. Right, right now, okay. I don't know how to how to. I I want to see exactly how you um, justified the statement as true or false, so as to 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 see why I said it was wrong. <laughs> right, but the point is that there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between punctuation and tonality. Okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Then, any other doubt as regards the true or false exercise? Anything you remember? Okay. Let's. Okay, there was uh, one problem here. In most cases, connected with the stressed syllable. In this example here, and is the prehead. Everyone in the, that's the head. The tail is not family, is mus family, mus family. The nucleus is Tom. Right? In the word Thomas, you have the nucleus and the beginning of the tail. And um, Ev would be the onset. It's the first accent. And then it says stressed syllable. The stressed syllable is Pam. Stressed syllables are those syllables which are not accented but are rhythmically strong. Use these uh, small circles to indicate that the syllable is rhythmically strong because you cannot reduce the word. In the word family, the syllable fam is always going to be a ah, fam. You cannot say, say this syllable with a schwa, for example, as a family. And as you have a strong vowel there, there's a rhythmic beat. And we show that rhythmic beat with this um, circle. So this is the stressed syllable. Stressed, not accented. Stressed. Rhythmically stressed. Accents are connected with meaning. You accentuate those words or the syllable, the lexically stressed syllable in those words which you want your listener to focus his or her attention on. Right, so accentuation is something decided by the speaker. You decide which words to accentuate. But when it comes to rhythmic stresses, it's not something you decide. It's just a word that has not been accented, has a strong syllable, and so there's a rhythmic beat there. But of course, we're going to work with complete um, intonation patterns a lot from now on. So don't worry if you got this wrong or you cannot see it right now. We'll keep on working with this. 
right now we uh, up to now we have been working with mainly with tone and nucleus and you have just been identifying other accents we see that there's more to say about other accents and rhythmic stresses and that's what we have to do during this second term okay teacher does it happen uh, with genetic case does it happen with genetic case like the term family or... But what do you mean? Uh, what, what is it that happens with genitive case? Uh, these uh, stressed syllables. No, this, uh, it's just a strong syllable with a strong vowel, sometimes diphthongs or the weak vowels are schwa, happy e and the U in U. Those are purely weak. Sometimes the short U and the short E can be also weak. Uh, but the rest of the vowels, the long vowels, A, E, O, right? All of them are strong. And if you have a word and the syllable with one of those strong vowels in a phrase, and that word, didn't get an accent because it was not important uh, for the meaning. And so you don't, you decide not to accentuate that word. Still, you have a strong syllable. And that's what you do with those circles. You indicate which, which syllables are strong, but not accented. It, does, okay. it does not depend on grammar or, or anything. No, like it's, it has to do with the quality it's of the vowel phonetic, you have there. Right. Hmm. The quality of the vowel is what counts. Right? Any other question as regards this? Yes. Nope. Then we uh, have, oh yeah, we have I'm one. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I couldn't listen to the to your answer very well, but I think my my answer is is going to that way. Um, we had, I mean, I I had a question as regards uh, the accents that you add, um, as for example, in this exam in this uh, tone unit that we had in mm -hmm. the in the term exam. Uh, for example, here the word uh, F, I mean, this, the syllable F is uh, accented, but that accent is not the same that, um, I mean, it's not the one that is, um, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, is it different, the rhythmical accent, than the, uh, 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 the accent that the, the word has? by default. I don't know if you understand my my question. Um, for example, um, uh, there are some uh, tone units in the written assignment that we have to hand in today. And mm -hmm. um, I found some accents that uh, they, for, for example, there is a phrase, um, that's what they thought. And for me, they is um, or, no, sorry. Uh, well, my question is that there are some tone units in which words that don't uh, take an accent in, the, um, in, in their pronunciation, uh, they do sound stronger, uh, but they are not the, the nucleus of the tone unit. I don't know if you get my, my answer. Uh, my, my question, sorry. Okay, let's, let's do something because we have less than a minute. Okay. Let's okay. end the meeting, let's join again and we can talk about that, okay. right? Um, okay, so accents and stresses. <laughs> let's see, if we are talking about a word, all words, are stressed, right? We can talk about 
word stress. So you take a word like everyone and you know that it's, uh, it gets the main stress on the syllable ev, right? That's when we talk about individual words. Every single word, when you check the word in the dictionary, you will find a certain stress pattern. And that is what is called the lexical stress. That's a property of the word. And you cannot change that. It's like that. It's not something that you can change. Right? The lexical stress is given in the dictionary, if you want. You cannot alter that. And you know that for every single word, there's a specific stress pattern. Now that lexically stressed syllable that you have in, in all words are, some words do not have a stress, monosyllabic words get the main stress there on that only syllable they have. Now, the point is that there are some words which have a strong form and a weak form. Right? Yes, because, I am sorry, uh, because there are some tone units, for example, I uh, found one here. Um, the fire chief told everyone, for example, and told, I mean, mm -hmm. Um, even though it, as you said uh, now, it's, it's stressed because it has uh, only one one syllable, right? But um, for me, it takes a, 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 it, it's strong, it's strong, but it's not the nucleus. And although it doesn't take a lexical, um, I mean, it, it's not, it's already stressed, but you don't show it by means of a diacritic. Here you have to place the diacritic because it's uh, it's it's prominent, it's accented, but it's not the nucleus no, no, or anything. Um, but I don't know if you get. I, I don't know if I'm <laughs> explaining myself. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay, but let let let's go step by step. Okay. We talked about lexical stress. It's a property of the word, you cannot change that. And then we have to talk about uh, stress and accent at the level of the phrase, right? And that's, uh, or then when you can um, decide, depending on the context, you decide which words deserve to be, for the sake of your message, and they're the correct uh, transmission of your message, which words you want your listener to pay more attention to. And so you add pitch prominence, that is, you accentuate the lexically stressed syllable of those words which you want your listener to pay attention to. So you have a phrase, and in a given phrase you say, okay, I think these two words are the most important ones. I want the listener to pay attention to these two words. The rest are function words or are words which can be recovered from the context. They don't transmit new information. They are not important. I want to highlight these two words. Okay, you've selected two words. Now, you have to look at that, at those individual words and see where the lexical stress falls. And on that syllable, you're going to add pitch prominence, and that is, you're going to accentuate it. So there's a coincidence. On the same syllable, you have the lexical stress and you have an accent. But sometimes you have words, as you said, because as I said, you, you think they are not important or they were mentioned before or they are function words. But still, there's a lexical stress there. 
they sound strong, but they are not accented. And so that, that, those are the syllables which we call stressed syllables. At the level of the sentence, I'm talking of the level of the sentence. They are stressed, but not accented. That is, they are rhythmically strong, but not accented. The ones which you accentuate are those which you consider to be important. And what does it mean to add pitch prominence or to accentuate? It's to make the syllable louder, longer, to have a sudden pitch change. And of course, the nucleus is an accented syllable. By definition, the nucleus is the last accent in the phrase. So the nuclear syllable is, by definition, accented the last accent. It is also a rhythmically strong syllable. Be why? Because it's the syllable that gets the lexical stress in that word. It's a bit messy. I don't know if... <laughs> Sorry, teacher. It's yeah. me, Angie. Um, can I illustrate what, uh, with an example of what Juli tried to explain? <laughs> For example, in the tone unit of a new bat, um, we um, wrote a diacritic in new, but in the dictionary, it did it doesn't appear with the diacritic with the stress because it's well, it doesn't um, have a stress have stress, and the nucleus for us is bat. So the question was if it is correct to write, to write the diacritic in new, even though it doesn't um, have the, the stress. Which is the whole phrase, sorry? Of a new bat. That, that, that's it. C can you write this in the chat? I don't remember that. It's it's from the assignment. Yes, the phrase says, was dreaming of a new bat. Mr. Thomas was dreaming of a new bat. That of a new bat. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So, where's the nucleus? In bat. Okay. Um, on bat. Bad is also a monosyllabic word. Yes. Still, you accentuated it. I mean, it doesn't matter if the word is monosyllabic or it has two or three syllables. Of course, if you have two syllables, you have to see which is the syllable that gets the lexical stress because that's the one that will be accentuated. When you have a monosyllabic word, well, you have to see if that monosyllabic word is accented or not. Right. If so it's accented, in, you have in, to, and, and the word is a, a one that has a strong form and a weak form, then if you have a pronoun and that pronoun is accented, you will have to use a strong form. But in the case of new, for example, if it's accented, it's accented and that's it. If it's not accented, probably we'll get a rhythmic stress. Do you think that in that context, yes. he was dreaming um, of a new bat? Do you consider the word new to be one, uh, an important piece of information? that you want your listener to see clearly or hear clearly. We all agree on the fact that the nucleus is bat. The fact that this bat is new, yeah. is it important? I mean, I mean it's, it's a piece of information which you think deserves to be accent, accented. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It is important. Um, if I understood correctly, we have to pay attention to 
what we hear. Can you hear me well? Yeah, a bit. Uh... Well, I can write. Yes, I think um, I I will try to. I, I got what you what you explain, uh, teacher. I think it's clear now. Um, I think I was uh, asking mainly for the, um, um, you know, for the um, about the diacritic. I mean, the diacritic that we add to um, mark ac accent in the. Mm -hmm. the talking about rhythmical accent is not it doesn't mean that that word in the dictionary um, uh, let's say pronunciation um, that, that that word takes a lexical accent I mean the diacritic you know for example new uh, doesn't take a diacritic I mean if you look for, uh, for that word in the dictionary it doesn't take a diacritic but when, for example, in this sentence uh, of a new bat, uh, if, the, if the speaker wants to accentuate that word, it will take a rhythmical diacritic that marks accent, right? No, in the dictionary, you don't have uh, the stress mark for a word like new because it's a monosyllabic word and it's a... Uh, um, I think it's not included because it's redundant information if you want. You need to show which syllable is uh, stressed if you have two syllables. If you have only one, that syllable is the one that is stressed. I mean, in any kind of monosyllabic word, um, like, uh, I don't know, dog, doll, hand, whatever. You don't get the diacritic to indicate that that syllable is stressed because it's the only syllable there. You get the, 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 the stress whenever you have two or more syllables in the dictionary. But if monosyllabic words are stressed, it's just that they don't include it there because it's uh, redundant, I mean. And what they do include in the dictionary is those words which, depending on whether they are accented or not, they have a different pronunciation. For example, pronouns. If they are accented, you will have to use a strong form. If they are not accented, you will use a weak form. And you do have that information in dictionaries. If you don't have information as regards a strong and a weak form and the word is monosyllabic, it means that you get a stress there. Or, I mean, it's a strong syllable. And in the case he was dreaming of a new bat, the, the point is that we are using the same diacritic in our transcriptions to show intonation, it's the diacritic is the same, the one that you get for lexical stresses in dictionaries, and the one that we are using to show accent. It's the same diacritic, but there are uh, the meaning is different. What you find in the dictionary is uh, the stress of the word. In the transcription in a phrase, the same diacritic is, show, is used to show, to indicate that the syllable is accented. And accentuation is something uh, connected with uh, the message, with meaning, with the context, with the importance of words, and not with any property of the word that you cannot alter. The the big problem I think I see is that we're the, the diacritic is the same. 
and you will see that we're going to start using new diacritics to indicate accents very soon <laughs> that will turn things a bit more messy because not accents not all accents sound the same we have high accents we have low accents we have rising accents uh, falling accents and you will have to distinguish between them and you, we, 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 we will be using different diacritics for accents in this second part of the year. Right now we've been using only one and that's a coincidence there that the diacritic is the same used in dictionaries for lexical stresses. But we are marking different things. Yes, I got now uh, what you said, Vali. Thank you. All right. What about the rest? Any other question as regards this? I have a question as regards um, written, assumber, written assignment number eight. Can okay. I ask you about it or not? All about right. I because I have a question. It. Yeah. Um, the, the tone, when we have to identify tones, the mm -hmm. IPs are not the same as uh, the ones that we have to transcribe, or am I wrong? Because for example, in IP number, um, IP number seven, the, the IP says, I mean, the recording says the fireman, and in the video, it says the fire chief. And then I found a different um, stress pattern in IP number two. And every, well, no, I'm not going to say it, but there is, for me, that's what I heard. I, he I heard a different stress pattern in IP number two and in IP number 12, I think. Are they from the same video? That is my question. They are. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. Because yeah. IP number seven says the fireman, and in the video it says the fire chief. The fire chief tells everyone. Yes, I, I, I was thinking of the same thing. And there's, I, I heard a different stress pattern for the, I don't remember which IP it is, but it's as the neighbors gathered. Mm hmm. Yes, me too. I'm opening the, the assignment because <laughs> I cannot remember this. You, you've been working on it most probably a lot for the last few days <laughs> and, and I haven't. So I'm trying to open the file and see what you are referring to. Oops, I don't have it here. Hmm. Oh, I cannot find it. Mog's Christmas Calamity. Which IP is it? Number? Number seven. Number seven um, has a different word. And number um, six, six and seven. I think I heard that this is what I heard that in the original one, IP6 says as the neighbors gathered, and in the in, in the second part, in the recording, you hear as the neighbors gathered. I'll That's what I heard. Oh. Number seven and number six. This is number seven. The fireman told everyone. 
person in the video, uh, it, the narrator says the 5G. Yes. Really? 5G. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It does. Yes. <laughs> Because these were taken from the clip. I don't know <laughs> if there's a different version of the video because uh, probably, the, the... probably that's what, what happened. They, they somehow changed the video because you know that today it's not politically correct to say fireman. You have to say fire chief or firefighter uh, to avoid sexism. Because... So probably they changed the video <laughs> and so now you we have a different version. On, uh... Um, we worked on this clip a couple of years ago, and I remember I took the, the, the I, I selected all these IPs and I recorded the audio from the video. Now, when I prepare this for, for to work this year, I've included the link to the clip that mm -hmm. I, I looked for the, the clip again. So probably there are two versions then. And I didn't yes, notice that. In the subtitles of the uh, of the video, it also says the fireman, but the narrator says the fire chief. So. Okay, so, so probably it's a new story. version of the a new version of the of the video, and these IPs were um, cut from the one I used a couple of years ago. But they, okay. it's not that I recorded them. It, they they were taken from from the clip. It's audio from the clip, so you can change the word. Or <laughs> actually, you you uh, the the stress pattern is the same. Whether you say fire chief or fireman, we have a syllable of two words. Uh, sorry, a, a word of two syllables, and the the lexical stress falls on the first one, fireman or fire chief. But in number right? six, the stress is different. Number six. Number let six. Me, yeah, no, let me look at the number six. The recording is different from the video. And I think, I'm not sure, I think that number two is also different. IP number two is different uh, in the recording <sighs> from the video. I think, I'm not sure, okay? You, you will have to I correct will have to find. I will have to find right or change the IPs or <laughs> or find the original video. <laughs> right. Uh, I think that maybe what, what you could do is work with a, with a with with a cut pieces with the excerpts and use right. the video as reference for for the story and the images and stuff like that. But That's then work with the excerpts. Yeah. For the dictation part, just follow the clip as it is. And for the the identification of tones and and accents, just listen to the the different bits and respect that. And sorry about but, that, I didn't notice. But it's it's really good I that they noticed. Think there would there were going to be such small changes in a cliff. Yeah, but really? the fact that they noticed is a, is a really positive thing. So it's a good that's, thing. That's really right. good. <laughs> we didn't do it on purpose, yeah. but anyhow, it worked out fine <laughs> because you noticed differences, and so that's that's really good. I have a question. In exercise B, do we have to mark the nucleus as well, or in, just sorry? In exercise B, do we have to mark uh, the nucleus or just the tone? You cannot mark you the tone to. without marking the nucleus. That's what uh, all right. Okay. Because Virginia was asking in the chat, I think. Oh. You have to. In exercise B, oh, I, I mean, in two, part two, A, it says that you have to listen to each of these. Uh, recordings and decide whether the speaker is using one of the falling tones or one of the non-falling tones, taking into account. That's why you have to pay attention to the whole video. So you know if you, the speaker is going to continue speaking or has reached the end of what he's saying. 
right? But then you have to decide which of the falling tails or non-falling tails you've perceived. It's like two steps. But in order to decide on the tone that's being used, first, the necessary step is to identify the nucleus. Because that's the starting point for the tone. So that's something that you have to do for the dictation. Right? The, the first okay, part, so part A, you have to transcribe into phonetic script the whole text and identify the nucleus in each IP. So when you get to part B, you already know where the nucleus E is in, in, in each, in each um, IP. What you have to decide now is what kind of tone is used in each of the selected IPs. Falling or non-falling, and then if it's falling, which of the falling tones is being used? But the nucleus is something you've identified before in the first part. Yes, the problem I think was that some of the, the, the tone units have changed. So we weren't sure. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the problem we couldn't uh, see that was coming. Oh, uh, how strange. But well, <laughs> because... we follow the video, right? And we transcribe it as it is in the first uh, exercise. Right. right, follow the video, follow the video for the, for part, for part one. And for part two, I think it's, uh, you will have to follow the, what you hear in the, in the, in the audio files. Sorry, there are differences in some of them. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> I'll have to look for the original recording. Valeria, can I ask you something? Just mark them. You don't have to justify anything. I don't know who is writing this. Okay. Yep. Tell me. Uh, because I, I, I transcribe the text and in part mm -hmm. two, I only write the tone. For example, number one, uh, uh, four rise. But I, using the, the nucleus from the, from the first part, I only mark the tone. Do I have to transcribe again the, the, the whole part? Um, no, it's not necessary. Because as the girls were saying, there are some parts um, the different. problem is, right, the problem is that but, some IPs are different and we... I, yes, I but the, I think that what is different is the nucleus, not the tone. But you found so differences as regards where to... the nucleus falls? Yes. I found... Okay, so in, in those cases, in those cases, transcribe so as to transcribe the. I thought, what can we do <laughs> but to make it nucleus... clear? I I think then if there are differences uh, be between the clip and these IPs, transcribe the IP, underline the nucleus, and indicate which tone is being used just to make it clear enough that so, so that we have we don't have doubts but if, checking. Uh, if the tone if the nucleus is on fireman or fire chief it's the same mm -hmm. if the tone is you know, referring or, or, or falling or rising it doesn't matter if it is right on but one just word in case to make it clear <laughs> i mean it doesn't I sent take it uh, yesterday, so. okay uh, <laughs> so well it's done. Well, don't I worry. Don't... It's it's done. I think yeah. I, I will be able to understand what you mean. But if you have not sent it yet, just 
transcribe the IP, underline the nucleus, and indicate which is the tone using the, the correct diacritic. Okay, thanks. Doesn't thanks. take much longer to, to do that. And it's just for, for the sake of making it clear. Right? Okay. Um, any other doubt as regards box Christmas Galati? Any other differences? How strange, really. I don't know if uh, I downloaded this, uh, probably because if I if I cut these bits from the from the original clip, I must have it in my computer, the original one, I mean. And uh, when I included the link to the clip, probably I selected a, a different one, and I I didn't notice that I thought it was the same. <laughs> but how very strange. Probably Lucia, you're right, with this fireman or fire 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 chief, firefighter so as not to be sexist. Maybe it's that. Okay. Um then what were we we were taking the midterm but i think the corrections were quite clear as regards new displacement um there was one phrase they love to eat people most of you justified oh you justified Nucleus placement in different ways, but as long as you justified your choice in the correct way, I accepted different versions. Like in um, IP3, when uh, it says they love to eat people, and you said, well, people is a word of wide denotation, so you don't accentuate that. But some people said they love to eat people. And I think that's better because it's not something very common to like eating people, <laughs> right? So I think it deserves to be the nucleus. It's not just that they like to eat vegetables, <laughs> it's they like to eat people. Um, but uh, if you said that it's a word of wide denotation, it was correctly justified. And I think that's all. Oh, and something, uh, some comments as regards the oral interview. Remember that we asked you to not to edit the audio file. That's an important thing because we wanted the recording to resemble the, the, the actual interview or the one that we were supposed to have live in the classroom. And another thing is that for the second part, you are supposed to, I know that you rehearsed and that you prepared your answers, but it didn't have to sound like you were reading the answers aloud. The idea was to check your spontaneous production. And in many cases, that second part, which was supposed to sound spontaneous, sounded like you were reading. You know there are differences when you read than when you speak spontaneously as regards the kind of pauses that you use, the length of IPs, there's a, a big difference between the way in which you sound when you're reading aloud and the way you sound when you are speaking with friends or, or with a teacher in the classroom. Um, so the idea was for you to sound 
spontaneous in that part. And as regards the second spontaneous part, those of you, many of you did it correctly. And in many cases, we marked as a comment in the tone column, Spanish rice. And we marked some examples of Spanish rices. I would like to listen to your recordings again, paying attention to that. We're going to discuss it next week, the use of the Spanish rice. But I would like you, if you got that comment of the Spanish rice, I would like you to listen to your recording carefully and pay attention to the fact that when you are reading aloud in the first part, the text that you have to, re to read, you didn't use that melody. You started using it the moment you started speaking spontaneously. And it's like the, the, it, there's a very different, there shouldn't be so much difference between the melodies that you use when you're reading a text in English than the melodies that you use when you're speaking spontaneously. It's like you were very careful in the first part and then in the second part when you have to speak spontaneously there was something Spanish in between. <laughs> And the, the Spanish thing was, uh, in some cases, it was connected with vowels and consonants, but there was a Spanish melody there. And that going up in some phrases, like this, going up, well, uh, my favorite place to go on holidays and something like that. I will have to hear it again so as to tune in with the way in which you speak. but. Pay attention to the examples we've included in the comments, and you'll see that you, that melody that you use in those phrases which we marked as Spanish rice is not something that you used in the first part. Lucia has something to say, but the mic is off. I'm signaling that the meeting will end in less than a minute. Oh, it will end. And I think that, uh, sorry. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you wanted to say something. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the meeting is about to end. Do you have any questions or shall we call it a day?